whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. For his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. In this the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. But this is the message that ye heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother. And wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil, and his brothers righteous. This generation is living in a time where expressing yourself is becoming a crime. You can't discuss current events without Satan's puppets censoring you and over-emotional people getting offended with the truth. The kingdom of darkness is enforcing a society where all of Adam's seed cannot live a life without persecution. Satan said to Adam that because he now ruled over him through the covenant he made with him when they ate from the forbidden tree, Satan said to Adam that he was going to persecute him and his seed until he destroyed them and overcome them in this realm. Satan know that Adam and his seed cannot obtain deliverance until the judgment against Adam ends. Then Satan answered and said unto him, It is I who hid myself within the serpent and who talked to Eve and beguiled her until she hearkened to my command. I am he who sent her through the wiles of my speech to deceive thee until thou and she ate of the fruit of the tree and ye came away from under the command of God. But now, O Adam, by reason of thy fall, thou art under my rule and I am king over thee because thou hast hearkened to me and hast transgressed against thy God. Neither will there be any deliverance from my hands until the day promised thee by thy God. Again, he said, and as much as we do not know the day agreed upon with thee by thy God, nor the hour in which thou shalt be delivered, for that reason will we multiply war and murder upon thee and thy seed after thee. Most people don't know about the covenant between Satan and Adam and the threats Satan made towards Adam and his seed. The synagogue of Satan altered the scriptures and removed prominent books that can further your understanding about the past and present. Despite of Satan's schemes to rule this realm until the judgment against Adam is fulfilled, the Most High gave his people the Holy Spirit to help with their understanding. Only the Holy Spirit can reveal truth to you and tell you the things to come. Albeit when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Whenever Satan and his disciples wants to deceive the indigenous black people to stop them from obtaining knowledge that would strengthen their relationship with the Most High, the synagogue of Satan claim these books that reveal information about the Most High and the origin of certain bloodlines are lost. For example, When the workers of iniquity don't want to acknowledge the real descendants of the 12 tribes of Israel, they claim the tribes are lost. I'm not sure how a society that has advanced technology can't find a group of people. The serpent seed travel all over the world, colonizing everything in their path. In the mix of colonizing every land, they haven't located the so-called lost tribes. Google can pin your location in seconds. Social media can make certain topics, pictures, and trends go viral in a few minutes. Somehow the rulers of this world cannot locate the so-called missing tribes. The Apocrypha and many other books are a part of the Bible. The synagogue of Satan claimed those books are lost and can't confirm the versions they made available to the public are authentic. Like the Bible, the Apocrypha, and the other books are altered. That is why you need the Holy Spirit. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man, but the spirit of God. The other species of mankind know exactly who they are. 
They proclaim they are the original people of the world and claim every great civilization for themselves. Somehow they don't know where and who the descendants of the 12 tribes of Israel are today. They are conducting DNA tests and disturbing ancient remains to find evidence to prove that they are the original people. And to this day, they can't seem to find any evidence that solidify them as the original people. They rely on their lies and their satanic mainstream media to verify them when history does not acknowledge them. Israelites and indigenous black people, the reason our living conditions is this way, Satan and his hosts are the rulers of this world. This is why I refer to what many people call white supremacy as the beast system. We are living in darkness. Not too many people understand the magnitude of what took place when Satan deceived Adam and Eve in the garden. A spiritual death is far more worse than a physical death. The scripture said the Most High made the man and woman in his image and likeness. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he, him, male and female created he, them. Everything the Most High is, the men and women he created in his image and likeness is also. The difference is that the Most High is the supreme ruler. He is the Alpha and the Omega. Outside of him, there is no one else. I am the Lord, and there is none else. There is no God beside me. I girded thee, though thou hast not known me that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none beside me. I am the Lord, and there is none else. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. When Adam and Eve were deceived in the garden, they lost what the scriptures refer to as a bright nature. When Satan deceived them and Adam and Eve made a covenant with Satan, they lost the bright nature. The people the Most High breathed the breath of life into are now living in a dead state. The descendants of Adam and Eve are living in an altered reality. Before Adam and Eve lost their bright nature, they had eyes to see. The book of Genesis said when Adam and Eve ate from the forbidden tree, their eyes were opened. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Did Adam and Eve's eyes really open when they ate from the forbidden tree? The scripture said they knew they were naked and proceeded to cover themselves. Let us go behind the scenes to the root of the offense that caused Adam and his seed to live in an altered state. In the book of Adam and Eve, Adam lamented about his altered reality. Adam said before his transgression, he was able to see into the heavens and see the angels. Now that he lost his bright nature, everything was hidden. Then Adam wept and said, O oh God, when we dwell in the garden and our hearts were lift up, we saw the angels that sang praises in heaven. But now we do not see as we were used to do. Nay, when we entered the cave, all creation became hidden from us. And Adam said to Eve, Look at thine eyes and at mine, which before beheld angels in heaven, praising, and they too without ceasing. But now we do not see as we did. Our eyes have become a flesh. They cannot see in like manner as they saw before. The Most High replied to Adam and said when he had the bright nature, he could see things from far away. Now that he lost his bright nature, he can only see things that are close. Adam and Eve obtained an eye suitable for the flesh. They could only view the Most High's creation from this world the animals, plants, and anything that is flesh. Then God the Lord said unto Adam, When thou wast under subjection to me, thou hadst a bright nature within thee, and for that reason couldst thou see things afar off. But after thy transgression, thy bright nature was withdrawn from thee, and it was not left to thee to see things afar off, but only near at hand after the ability of the flesh, for it is brutish. In addition to seeing things from a far distance, Adam and Eve never had to eat, drink, sleep, and the many other things we are now required to do to upkeep this fleshly body in the garden. Once they were kicked out of the garden, they had to learn how to live in a human body. 
O Adam, when thou was in my garden, thou knewest neither eating nor drinking, neither faintness nor suffering, neither leanness of flesh nor change, neither did sleep depart from thy eyes. But since thou transgressed and camest into this strange land, all these trials are come upon thee. Israelites and indigenous black people, as the descendants of Adam and Eve, all we know is this fleshly body. None of Adam's descendants experienced the bright nature the Most High gave to his creation. Adam and Eve sinned before their descendants could experience the bright nature Adam spoke about and desperately wanted to get back. We don't know what it's like not to eat, drink, sleep, and do all the things required to upkeep this body. We are living in an altered state. We are living in an environment that was never meant for us. O Lord, when I was in the garden and saw the water that flowed from under the tree of life, my heart did not desire, neither did my body require to drink of it, neither did I know thirst, for I was living, and above that which I am now. O spirits who wait upon God, look upon me and upon my being unable to see you. For when I was in my former bright nature, then I could see you. I sang praises as you do, and my heart was far above you. But now that I have transgressed, that bright nature is gone from me, and I am come to this miserable state. And now am I come to this, that I cannot see you, and you do not serve me as you were wont, for I am become animal flesh. Adam and Eve finally realize they are altered beings and they cannot enter the garden in their conditions. They had to learn to live in the human body and adapt to their new lifestyle. Then Adam and Eve came back into the cave sorrowful and weeping because of the alteration in their nature. And they both knew from that hour that they were altered beings, that their hope of returning to the garden was now cut off and that they could not enter it. For that now their bodies had strange functions, and all flesh that require food and drink for its existence cannot be in the garden. What their fleshly body required was not in the garden but from the earth. Adam and Eve are now inhabitants of the earth. They had to learn to live outside of the garden. Then Adam said to Eve, Behold, our hope is now cut off, and so is our trust to enter the garden. We no longer belong to the inhabitants of the garden, but henceforth we are earthy and of the dust and of the inhabitants of the earth. We shall not return to the garden until the day in which God has promised to save us and to bring us again into the garden as he promised us. The Most High created the indigenous black people for the garden. However, because of Adam and Eve's transgression, we must live outside of the garden. Adam and Eve refer to the world outside of the garden, strange land. Earth is the place Satan and his angels were cast into when they rebel against the Most High. Earth is described as not having light, but covered in darkness. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. The Most High said he cast Satan into the earth because he has become darkness. When Adam and Eve sinned, they also joined Satan to live in darkness. But God in his mercy drove him from among us to this dark earth, for he had become darkness itself and a worker of unrighteousness. Yet if thou hadst submitted and had been obedient to me and have kept my word, thou wouldest be with my angels in my garden. But when thou didst transgress and hearken to Satan, thou didst become his guests among his angels that are full of wickedness. And thou camest to this earth that bring forth to thee thorns and thistles. Israelites and indigenous black people, that is why the other inhabitants on this earth hate you. Satan considered this realm his kingdom and decided he will make our lives miserable living here until the time comes for the Most High to deliver his people. The set time the Most High promised to restore Adam and his seed to the garden is five days and a half. Five day and a half in the flesh is 5,500 years. Remember, one day with the Most High is 1,000 years. Yea, the word that will again save thee when the five days and a half are fulfilled, 
But when Adam heard these words from God and of the great five days and a half, he did not understand the meaning of them. For Adam was thinking that there would be but five days and a half for him to the end of the world. And Adam wept and prayed to God to explain it to him. Then God in his mercy for Adam, who was made after his own image and similitude, explained to him that these were 5,500 years and how one would then come and save him and his seed. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. I wanted you all to understand as a people, we are not operating in the manner we were created. We are living in an altered state. I wanted you all to know the behind the scenes events that took place that caused us to live in the conditions we are living in, as well as why the other species of mankind hate us. You must look at the root to understand. We are living among Satan and his angels, unclean spirits and hybrids. We are surrounded by darkness. That is why Satan's kingdom is known as the kingdom of darkness. The Bible does not give us an account on how Satan persecuted Adam and Eve consistently in and out of the garden. The Bible does not tell us how Adam and Eve pleaded with the Most High, fast and prayed. They repented of their sins. Adam and Eve did everything that they could to reverse the judgment against them. However, when the word of the Most High is spoken, it will not return to him void, but it must do what he sent it to do. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. For I am God the Creator, who, when I create my creatures, did not intend to destroy them, but after they had sorely roused my anger, I punish them with grievous plagues until they repent. But if on the contrary they still continue hardening in their transgression, they shall be under a curse forever. Now that your knowledge has increased about our altered living conditions, the Most High had to teach Adam and Eve how to survive outside of the garden. They had to learn how to live in their altered bodies. What we take for granted today, like knowing what food to eat, how to identify a rock, the heat from the sun, Adam and Eve had no knowledge about these things. Our human bodies is all that we know. The Most High had to teach Adam and Eve how to satisfy their hunger. Adam and Eve body changed. Adam said again to Eve, what is our body today compared to what it was in former days when we dwell in the garden? When the 12 hours of darkness came upon Adam and Eve, they were afraid of what we call nighttime. When they lived in the garden, they never saw darkness. The workers of iniquity in the beast culture made it appear as if Adam and Eve are knowledgeable about the world outside of the garden. They had a hard time adapting to this world. Fast forward to this generation, as the descendants of Adam, we are knowledgeable about the flesh, but we know nothing about the Garden of Eden. We never experienced living in the garden with the unique body the Most High designed for us. The Most High promised that he would restore Adam and his seed to the garden. That is the promise many indigenous black people hang on to. The covenant promise the Most High made with Adam that has transferred from generation to generations. The remnant cleaves to that promise. Eternity for us is in the garden where the Most High designed for us to be from the beginning. Then will I in mercy save thy soul and the soul of the righteous to give them rest in my garden. And that shall be when the end of the world is come. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. And he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them, and be their God. Now that you know we are not designed for this fleshly world, and that we are living in an altered state, I hope now many of you understand why Yahshua said, My kingdom is not of this world. 
In addition, Yahshua said in heaven, we will not get married, but we will be like the angels. Our earthly bodies is designed for this realm, not the garden or eternity. That is why everything in this world is temporary. Satan and his host created many doctrines to mislead us and to cause a separation between us and the Most High. Satan persecuted Adam and Eve in and out of the garden. He did the same to their children and to all of Adam's seeds. Satan is a hater of all things good, and he wants this round for himself. He has raged war with Adam and his seed. But Satan, the hater of all good, thought within himself, whereas God has promised salvation to Adam by covenant, and that he would deliver him out of all the hardship that have befallen him, but has not promised me by covenant, and will not deliver me out of my hardship. Nay, since he has promised him that he should make him and his seed dwell in the kingdom in which I once was, I will kill Adam. The earth shall be rid of him and shall be left to me alone, so that when he is dead, he may not have any seed left to inherit the kingdom that shall remain my own realm. God will then be in want of me, and he will restore me to it with my hosts. Israelites and indigenous black people, it is because Adam and Eve repented, the Most High had mercy on his creation and granted us salvation. If they did not repent, our end would be like Satan, his angels, and followers. Make sure you keep a repentant heart. I have heard many doctrines concerning Cain and his origin. Some of you are now hearing for the first time how life was and came to be outside of religion. To expand your knowledge, you must start at the root. If you want to overcome your enemy and not become a tragedy like Cain, allow the spirit of the Most High to guide you into all truth. Let us go behind the scenes to the root to see if the doctrine of Satan fathering Cain is true. Many people believe Cain is of the seed of the fallen. Did he start off that way? The Bible does not give an account about Cain having a twin. The Bible said Adam knew Eve and she conceived and had Cain. According to the book of Adam and Eve, Cain and his twin sister are the first humans born from the womb of Eve. The book of Adam and Eve call her Luluwa. Cain means hater. According to the book of Adam and Eve, Adam named him Cain because he hated his sister. Luluwa means beautiful. The meaning of Cain is hater because he hated his sister in their mother's womb. Ere they came out of it, therefore did Adam name him Cain. But Ludawa means beautiful because she was more beautiful than her mother. The book of Jubilee, the Bible, and the book of Adam and Eve name Adam as the father to Cain. I have yet come across a scripture that said Satan went into Eve and fathered Cain. The doctrine of Cain being of the serpent seed is false doctrine. Adam is the father of Cain. He was present when Cain and his twin sister was born. Adam even prayed and asked the Most High to relieve Eve from the pain she suffered during labor. Prior to Adam getting intimate with his wife, Satan tried to get Adam to sin by trying to get him to be intimate with Eve in the act of fornication. Adam refused and seek the Most High on how to properly wed Eve before they were intimate. The scripture said Adam married Eve seven months and 13 days after they were kicked out of the garden. Then Adam and Eve began to fast and to pray until the end of the 40 days. And then they came together as the angels has told them. And from the time Adam left the garden until he wedded Eve were 223 days. That is seven months and 13 days. It takes nine months to have a child. Cain was not born in the garden. Adam and Eve did not know what sex was until the marine spirits appeared to them in the waters and showed them the act which created lust in Adam. Once Adam and Eve witnessed the act, Adam went to seek the Most High on how he should properly marry Eve. Adam was afraid to sin against the Most High after they were kicked from the garden. Adam became cautious he did not want to sin because his desire was to go back in the garden to live. And he answered her, that I may request the Lord to inform me about wedding thee, for I will not do it without his order, lest he make us perish, thee and me. For those devils have set my heart on fire with thoughts of what they showed us in their sinful apparitions. 
the reason in the beginning of this message, I spoke a lot about the bright nature we had in our altered living conditions to help you comprehend how out of their element, Adam and Eve were outside of the garden. Adam never knew his wife when they were in the garden. Neither one of them knew what a sexual act was until Satan showed them. If they knew each other in the garden, when they ate from the forbidden tree, they would not run to cover themselves if they were engaging in sexual acts in the garden. How can Eve sleep with Satan to produce Cain when Adam and Eve were introduced to the act together by the marine spirits? Eve did not get pregnant until seven months and a few days after they were kicked out of the garden. Adam is the father to Cain and the scriptures confirm. And Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And God looked at his maid servant Eve and delivered her, and she brought forth her firstborn son and with him a daughter. Then Adam rejoiced at Eve's deliverance and also over the children she had borne him. And Adam ministered unto Eve in the cave until the end of eight days, when they named the son Cain and the daughter Lulua. The book of Adam and Eve said Cain had a hard heart. Israelites, it is important to keep a pure heart because the heart is evil, according to the scriptures. The most high look at your heart. If your heart is hardened, like the scripture said about Cain, this conclude that you are wicked. And the children began to wax stronger and to grow in stature. But Cain was hard hearted and ruled over his younger brother. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. Just because Cain had a hardened heart, this does not conclude Satan is his father. If Satan fathered Cain, then he is the father to his twin sister as well. There are many indigenous black people with a hardened heart. The Bible called the Israelites stiff neck. Esau had the same wicked ways as Cain and Isaac is his father. The Most High said in the scriptures, my people are wise in doing evil. But my people is foolish. They have not known me. They are sottish children and they have none understanding. They are wise to do evil, but to do good they have no knowledge. How come many believe Satan fathered Cain when the scriptures clearly state Adam is his father? Do some people believe Adam cannot produce a child that is wicked? Is it because Cain committed the first murder he comes from Satan? Some of you have wicked kids, but you turn a blind eye to their wicked ways because of your love for them. If some of the indigenous black people were not wicked, it wouldn't be a remnant returning to serve the Most High. The remnant shall return, even the remnant of Jacob, unto the mighty God. For though thy people Israel be as the sand of the sea, yet a remnant of them shall return. The consumption decreed shall overflow with righteousness. Just as Satan persecuted Adam and Eve, he also persecuted their children. Satan deceived Cain just as he deceived Adam and Eve and many of you today. The Bible does not give an account on how Satan influenced Cain. If you read the book of Adam and Eve, you will see how Satan participated in the first murder. Then Adam told him all that had befallen them, and Abel felt deeply about what his father told him. Furthermore, his father Adam told him of the works of God and of the garden, and after that, he remained behind his father the whole of the night in the cave of treasures. And that night, while he was praying, Satan appeared unto him under the figure of a man, who said to him, Thou hast oftentimes moved thy father to make an offering, to fast, and to pray. Therefore I will kill thee and make thee perish from this world. There were many events that took place that caused Cain to murder his brother. When the Most High did not accept his offering and accepted Abel's offering, that made him furious. According to the book of Adam and Eve, Satan gossiped to Cain about his mother and father, Adam and Eve, giving Cain's twin sister to Abel to be his wife. Cain did not like that. The reason Cain did not find mercy from the Most High is because Cain did not repent of his sins. If he would have repented, his life would have been different. 
As to Cain, he was so sullen and so angry that he went into the field where Satan came to him and said to him, Since thy brother Abel has taken refuge with thy father Adam, because thou didst trust him from the altar, they have kissed his face and they rejoice over him far more than over thee. When Cain heard these words of Satan, he was filled with rage, and he let no one know, but he was laying wait to kill his brother until he brought him into the cave. Then Cain, the hard-hearted and cruel murderer, took a large stone and smote his brother with it upon the head until his brains oozed out and he welted in his blood before him, and Cain repented not of what he had done. For if Cain had repented at the time and had said, O oh God, forgive me my sin and the murder of my brother, God would then have forgiven him his sin. After Cain killed his brother, the Most High judged Cain and put a mark on Cain. When Cain left the presence of the Most High, he took his twin sister to be his wife. The Book of Jubilee said Cain took his sister Awan to be his wife. The book of Adam and Eve said Cain went to reside east of the garden. From there he built a city and called the city after his son Enoch. And the Bible gave the same account. And Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod on the east of Eden. And Cain knew his wife and she conceived and bare Enoch. And he built a city and called the name of the city after the name of his son Enoch. And Cain took Awan, his sister, to be his wife, and she bare him Enoch at the close of the fourth jubilee. And in the first year of the first week of the fifth jubilee, houses were built on the earth, and Cain built a city and called its name after the name of his son Enoch. Cain's son Enoch is not the same Enoch that descend from Seth's bloodline. The scriptures give two account of Cain's death. The book of Jubilee said his house fell on him. The book of Jasher said when Cain's grandson Lamech was hunting with his son Tubal Cain, Lamech had poor vision. His young son Tubal Cain was instructing him, helping his father locate the animals to hunt. They saw Cain from a distance and perceived that he was an animal. Lamech accidentally killed Cain. At the close of this jubilee, Cain was killed after him in the same year, for his house fell upon him and he died in the midst of his house, and he was killed by its stones. For with a stone he had killed Abel, and by a stone was he killed in righteous judgment. For this reason it was ordained on the heavenly tables, with the instrument with which a man killed his neighbor, with the same shall he be killed, after the manner that he wounded him, in like manner shall they deal with him. And Lamech was old and advancing years, and his eyes were dim that he could not see. And Tubal Cain, his son, was leading him, and it was one day that Lamech went into the field, and Tubal Cain, his son, was with him. And they whistled, they were walking in the field. Cain, the son of Adam, advanced towards them, for Lamech was very old and could not see much. And Tubal Cain, his son, was very young. And Tubal Cain told his father to draw his bow, and with the arrows he smote Cain, who was yet far off, and he slew him, for he appeared to them to be an animal. The Bible said Lamech killed Cain and Tubal Cain in the book of Genesis chapter 4, confirming the book of Jasher's account. You decide which version you want to believe. And Lamech said unto his wives, Ada and Zillah, Hear my voice, ye wives of Lamech. Hearken unto my speech. For I have slain a man to my wounding, and a young man to my hurt. If Cain shall be avenged a sevenfold, truly Lamech seventy and sevenfold. From the time Cain was born to the time he murdered his brother, the scriptures doesn't say anything about Satan being Cain's father. The doctrine of Cain being Satan's son is false. Cain was not a hybrid or of the seed of the fallen. Cain already started his bloodline long before the watchers took an oath to take the daughters of men for wives. It was during the time of Jared when the watchers descend on Mount Hermon and began to multiply with the daughters of men to produce children. And they all answered him and said, Let us all swear an oath and all bind ourselves by mutual imprecations not to abandon this plan, but to do this thing. 
Then swear they all together and bound themselves by mutual imprecations upon it. And they were in all two hundred who descend in the days of Jared on the summit of Mount Hermon. And they call it Mount Hermon because they had sworn and bound themselves by mutual imprecations upon it. And in the second week of the 10th Jubilee, Mahalalel took unto him to wife Dina, the daughter of Barakiel, the daughter of his father's brother. And she bare him a son in the third week in the sixth year, and he called his name Jared. For in his days the angels of the Lord descended on the earth. The birth of the serpent seed took place during the time of Jared. During this time, the earth was full of violence. There were hybrids of all sorts, and the giants walked the earth. Jared was born six generation after Cain. The fallen angels waited until the population of the children of men increased before they began to take the daughters of men for wives. Cain was the first man born on earth. There were not enough women on earth during his time for the watchers to procreate with the daughters of men to produce children for themselves. And it came to pass, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. The Most High is not going to allow the first person born from his creation to have the DNA from the serpent seed. The Most High doesn't admire the serpent seed like the children of men do. Cain is an indigenous black man who happened to be the first man born from a woman's womb. He lived in darkness. Besides his hardened heart, Cain allowed Satan to deceive him. Cain is no different from any male born in this generation that is wicked. The Most High cursed him for his wickedness. The Most High cursed many bloodlines that don't serve him and choose to do evil. Behind every wickedness is Satan and his hosts. Israelites, the time has come for you to identify the real enemy. Satan has raged war with you. It's about time that you comprehend that you live on a battlefield. Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. Cain was a teenager when he murdered his brother Abel. He was still a young man when he took a wife and was removed from the presence of the Most High. If Cain lived in this generation, he would be no different from a hard-headed troubled teen. Unfortunately, the indigenous black community is plagued with troubled people. By his behavior and wickedness, he is of the devil. But in DNA, Cain is 100% indigenous black male. The opening scripture in this message said, If you do good, you are of the Most High. But if you're wicked and unrighteous, then you are the children of the devil. Satan may not have been Cain's biological father, but Cain became his son through his wickedness. Anyone who does the will of Satan is of Satan, regardless of their bloodline. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. He that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Israelites and indigenous black people, if you're unrepentant and you follow the ways of this world, Satan is your father. The Most High is giving his people salvation, all those who repent, trust, and believe in him. When the end comes, the Most High will purge the unrighteous at judgment day. Make sure you are living a life that is pleasing to the Most High. A repentant heart will grant you the opportunity to inherit the kingdom. Israelites and indigenous black people, guard your heart. The way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not at what they stumble. My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. For they are life unto those that find them, and health to all their flesh. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life.